Thursday, July 14th. We're reading 2 Chronicles chapters 15 and 16, 1 Kings chapter 16, and the whole book of Philemon. In our 2 Chronicles chapters, this is all about Asa's reform of Judah after a time of evil. He begins to turn things around. So after the word of the Lord comes to him through a prophet, he is strengthened and his courage in following God's word was rewarded with a time of at least 10 years of peace for Judah. And large numbers of people from both in and around Judah came together and eagerly entered a covenant with God wholeheartedly and worshiped him. This covenant with God was an oath, or rather a commitment to him, that they would worship him alone and strive to do what he wanted. And this of course is something that we should all be striving to do. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Now when Asa continued to honor this covenant, the nation of Judah was blessed and they had no war. But that didn't last forever because unfortunately, while Asa is not perfect, as none of us are, he did eventually turn from the Lord once again and relied on other people and his own abilities rather than on God who had never failed him before. In 1 Kings chapter 16, this is more rather discouraging stories of the evil in the nation. Now, in a span of about 35 years of Asa's reign in Judah, there were five kings of Israel, and none of them did good in the eyes of the Lord. In fact, all of these kings did increasingly more evil, stirring up God's anger. But throughout this chapter, we can still see that the word of the Lord was fulfilled, whether that was in the punishment of this evil that the kings did, or in the rebuilding of Jericho at the end of the chapter. In the book of Philemon, over in the New Testament, this is the Apostle Paul's shortest letter in the New Testament, but arguably the most explosive as he was able to show rather than tell the significance of the death and resurrection of Christ. Now in this letter, he insists that a man named Philemon welcomes back his runaway slave named Onesimus, and this is so that they can be reconciled and he can share in the partnership of faith as brothers in Christ. This is something that would have been unheard of in the culture of the time. But it is in this faith that we today should be encouraging each other so as not to give up, but keep hold of this covenant that we've made with our God. Not because we should be rewarded for it by any means, but because our God is worthy. Now, I want to challenge you guys. If these videos have been helpful to you in these readings, then keep it up, of course. But if they have been more of a struggle for you, then I want to encourage and challenge you to double down and read more of these passages, whatever you feel led to read, maybe just the context, or meet up with someone and talk about this, whether it's in the comments below or in person. God is with you, and if you strive after him, he will continue to strive after you. So until next time, friends, you are sent.